What is up my friends? Today we are talking about the hottest selling bait of 2021 and one of my favorite subjects, beavers. Is that one of your favorite subjects, Jeff? Uh, not really, but I can go for a good beaver. Me too. And so could the bass. So today we are breaking down the OSP Dole Live Beaver. It's a bait that you hear us talk about a lot. You watched, unfortunately, Griff kind of whip my ass at a 1v1 on this thing. But this has become our go-to soft plastic bait. It was by far the number one selling bait in this shop last year. So we're gonna break it down. I'm gonna go through all the sizes, how to rig these things, make sure you guys know everything you need to know about these special beavers. If you're ready, let's do it. Welcome to the Hookup Tackle. The Hookup Tackle is the world's largest showcase of Mega Bass products featuring baits and colors not found at any other dealer. The hookup also offers a wide display of OSP, Evergreen, Depths, Lucky Craft, Jackal, and many more. The hookup tackle is owned and operated by family, is staffed by guides and verified tackle nerds who love helping anglers elevate their craft. If you're in the Phoenix area, we'd love to have you stop by our showroom and check out the wonderful world of Mega Bass and the hookup for yourself. If you shop online, there are almost 10,000 SKUs of Mega Bass products alone with hundreds of other companies and new products being added daily. So next time you're looking for that hard to find bait, that color your fish have never seen before, or maybe you just wanna elevate your game, look at thehookuptackle.com. All right, welcome back my friends. I am Ben with The Hookup Tackle, AKA The Tackle Otaku on Instagram. Of course, being joined by my buddy, Jeffrey the King, we're the Hookup Tackle USA. So Jeff, we did a top 21 of 21 episode where we broke down all the hottest selling baits of the year. Mm -hmm. And the number one hottest selling baits or bait by a big margin was the OSP Doe Live Beaver. So we thought, and we're kind of surprised that we had never really done a full breakdown on this bait, guy. Yeah. So we, we talk about it a lot, we use it a lot when we are out fishing, but we've never really done a full breakdown, top to bottom, go through the sizes, the riggings, how we're using it. So that's what we are gonna do today to make sure if you guys don't have this in the arsenal, you should incorporate it in. I want you to know how to use it. So first off, you know, when you hear the word beaver, everybody just naturally thinks to the Reaction Innovation Sweet Beaver, right? This is kind of, I don't know if it's the original beaver, but this is pretty much the OG beaver, right? So, you know, when you hear the term like, yeah, I'm flipping a beaver or something like that, this is usually what everybody is talking about. And this bait is never going away. This is an amazing bait. It's a very important bait in my arsenal. If you guys flip, if you guys pitch, if you guys throw soft plastics, you know, the Reaction Innovation Sweet Beaver is just the standard. And there's different versions of it now with different tentacles and actions and stuff. But basically, I wanted to show you a side-by-side -side comparison of the Reaction Innovation Sweet Beaver and the OSP Dole Live Beaver. So you kind of understand the difference between these, okay? So obviously this guy is going to be, you know, ribbed for the bass's pleasure. This guy's gonna be a little bit smoother. But the biggest difference in these baits is the Sweet Beaver is designed to kind of just kind of glide. It's a very natural moving bait. It doesn't have a lot of movement to it. It's just a very subtle, it just kind of falls through cover very easily. There's nothing really hanging off of it to grab on branches or grass or anything like that. So it's a very versatile bait, easy to work through, you know, heavy cover. Where the Dole Live Beaver really differs here is in the tentacles and in the flexibility here of the bait, okay? So you'll notice that it has these big appendages off the back here, and this is basically going to create this kicking motion. You notice it's kind of grooved in the middle so it flexes. It gives the beaver basically a two-in-one action. It's gonna have a dolphin kick motion is what they call it as it falls. And then when it doesn't have any weight pulling it down, it will switch to a horizontal fall, right? So this guy is going to be kicking on the way down and then no weight pulling it is just going to fall horizontally. So the design is to really mimic a live creature in the water, specifically a crawdad. But, you know, Jeff and I have basically taking these all over the country this year, 
caught fish that are feeding on gobies, caught fish that are feeding on shad, caught fish that are feeding on bluegill. And of course, if they are munching a crawdad, this is one of the deadliest things you can throw, okay? So let's talk about sizes, let's talk about riggings, and let's make sure you guys know what to do with the OSP Dole Live Beaver so you guys can catch a bunch of fish on it. Okay, so first off, it comes in four different sizes, okay? So there is a three inch size, I'm missing one there. That's good, just put it on a jig. A three and a half inch size, a four inch size, in a magnum size, okay? And we're gonna talk about each one of these. Now, the magnum is kind of a special one. We'll, we'll do that one at the end, just cause it's so big, okay? So these are gonna be the three main sizes. Now, the three inch size is gonna look a little bit different. The three inch, instead of having straight tentacles coming off of it. So here's a four inch and here's a three inch, right? So instead of just having these straight tentacles coming off of it, the three inch is gonna have little curly tentacles, okay? And that's because the three inch is really small and it's gonna have, it's gonna have that same kind of kick down that the bigger ones have, but it's a, it's a more subtle movement. So they wanna put just a little bit more life in it. So here's basically how we approach the rigging of these guys, right? So let's start with the three inch. So this is the smallest guy, so the three inch can be rigged on a very light, almost a micro free rig. It's a great way of doing it when the fish are shallow and they're very, very picky. So if you guys are fishing either small fish or fish that are you know, very picky, maybe they're feeding on little aquatic insects, right? So maybe you're fishing a river, a stream, and they're feeding on you know, larva or nymphs or something like that. You can go with a darker color beaver like this and you can really mimic you know, the flow of some kind of smaller bug underwater. Of course, it could be a little crawfish. The three inch is also excellent as a Ned bait. I don't love throwing a Ned rig. We talk about it a lot here, but I know in a lot of part of the country, if you're not throwing a Ned rig, you're not getting bit. This is an excellent little Ned rig bait just to make something different than like a TRD or your traditional Ned rig bait. So this will give you a lot more movement as it moves versus just, you know, that kind of lift and drop motion. So if you want to mix it up, this would make a great rig for that. I love the three inch as a little finesse jig trailer. So that's really for me where I utilize this bait a lot. So you could put it on the back of a little hunch jig, you know, a little finesse football jig, and you can see that it fits just perfectly. So, you know, as far as colors go, and we'll break down colors here as well. I pretty much in the smaller size, I stick, I love the black, uh, cause I think it's just a small little dark profile. I love the green pumpkin colors. Um, but of course you're gonna have to mix and match to your waters what you need. But behind the little finesse jig, you're gonna get the motion you need and the subtleness that you need to create something very, very natural. If you go really light on your jig, you can basically utilize this uh, in the same way you could like a hair jig or a really, really light finesse jig in the winter when you have to really downsize, light line, small little jigs. This can make a great alternative to that. So, you know, on a Ned rig, you know, any Ned size is great. If, if I'm gonna do this, this is usually my go-to head. This is the owner block head. This is a great one. Of course, you can use any of the Z-Man ones, uh, but just a traditional hook size is great. 3 16th, 8th ounce, whatever you guys like to use is great. If you are going to free rig it, you are going to want to use a smaller, lighter size hook. So like a size one or size two. So depending on the hook, it's gonna be one of these two. Okay, so I really like this Ryugi Infini hook. Decoy makes a KG hook that's great. Zapu makes a bellows hook that's great. I prefer the Ryugi over the others for this smaller size because it's a little bit thinner hook. It's a little bit lighter wire. It penetrates easy. You could get away with some lighter lines. So this is a great one. As far as the weight goes, you know, eighth ounce, three sixteenth ounce, something like that is a great place to start. So there is the three inch size. Now let's jump to the next two sizes, the three and a half and the four. So when we get to the three and a half and the four, the baits are exactly the same shape now, okay? So these two are pretty interchangeable, right? So you're gonna have the same exact shape, same exact profile. One's just gonna be a little bit bigger. So the four inch gets a little bit thicker on the body, a little bit bigger all the way around, 
right? So now it's just gonna come down to a size thing and what you need. So here's basically, there's no right or wrong to this, so whatever they're eating is right, right? So basically the way I look at this is if I'm gonna throw a free rig, which is how I use this thing probably 90% of the time, I pretty much live on the 3.5. I feel like the 3.5 is a very easy size for me to use with a spinning rod. I can manipulate the action perfectly with it. it it's just, just the perfect all around size. It's big enough to be something substantial for a fish and it's small enough to be very neutral and you know unintrusive to the fish. The four inch size, I pretty much reserve for myself as a flipping bait. And I use it a lot as a flipping bait and I'll show you some of the riggings that we do with that as well, okay? So let's talk about the free rig and how we set that up so that you guys know exactly what we're doing. Okay, so first up, you know, there's there's a lot of great options on the market as far as, you know, rods, reels, etc. If you hang out around here at all, you know that we talk about the Windbuster a lot. This is my go-to free rig rod. This is a Mega Bass Destroyer P5 Windbuster. They're gonna sit you back about 475 bucks it's worth every single penny. It is the most sensitive rod that I've ever used in spinning, and it's got the perfect bend to it. So it was built to throw hard bait, so it bends a little bit deeper in the blank than a traditional jig and worm rod, which ends up working perfect for the free rig because it just absorbs so much of the hook set, and it just, it, I, I feel like I hook every fish that bites with this thing. So Windbuster, 3000 size reel for me. I'm a bougie motherfucker, so it's an exist, but whatever, you know, reel fits for you is fine. Uh, and it's always some kind of braid to leader connection here. And this is important because you really want this line to be limp because you are really having to do a lot of manipulation with a free rig. So it's very important that your line is limp and responsive, right? So generally some kind of 15 pound braid to a eight to 10 pound leader normally. So eight is probably my go-to. I will go to 10 if they're not line shy. So trust me, go as heavy as you can get away with on your leader line because when they eat this thing, they eat it. They know that this thing is a real crawdad or a real fish. And so it's not like they're nibbling it. They suck that thing in and it is in the crushers. So your line is going to be definitely rubbing on the inside of the fish's mouth, on the teeth. So if you can get away with 10 pound or 12 pound or 14 pound, do it, okay? If they're not biting it, then you can drop down to an eight pound. I usually don't go lighter than that just because the way they eat this thing, you're gonna break off a lot of fish if you go much lighter because it's gonna be rubbing on the inside and on those teeth, okay? So uh, here is the basic rigging on here. I live on a quarter or three eighth ounce weight and we are using just a round eye drop shot weight. I'll show those to you here in a second. And I'm using a one aught or two aught EWG style hook. I like the EWG style because I want it to have enough width because so, it is a semi bulky plastic, but I want it to kind of be a short profile too because I don't want that hook to come back too far. Okay, and that's it. I don't, I don't mess with beads or stoppers or anything like that. If you use a good weight, they slide up and down the line without fraying anything. Okay, so let's talk about and make sure you guys know exactly the hooks and weights that we're using. Okay, four weights, right? You are gonna want this round eye drop shot weight. That's the best way to use on the free rig. So the one that I always reach for is the Ryugi uh, DS Delta round eye drop shot weight. This is my favorite one. I just like the shape. I just have a lot of confidence in it. It comes through cover great, and it's available in tons of sizes from like super light, like a 32nd ounce, all the way to one ounce. So I can punch with it. I can go really finessey. I can use the same weight for a lot of different things. So this is a great one. The other ones that are great that I will use, really for me, like if I'm out of these, right, I'll switch to something like this. The Zapu, is, they make a great one in the pin free shot. And then decoy also makes a great one in the DS8. So the decoy is an interesting shape. It's a, you know, kind of got more ridges to it. It'll come through cover great. This is gonna be lead. These are gonna be tungsten. I prefer the tungsten just because it has a faster sink rate. It's a little more dense. It just sinks down. It doesn't have quite the amount of movement to it, right? But it, there's no right or wrong. Whatever works for you guys is fine. Decoy will be a little less expensive and they're all good. They all have a good, clean ring so they're gonna slide up and down the line without nicking anything. As far as hooks go, 
Whatever hook is working for you guys is fine, right? These are the hooks that are tried and true. We've been using them for a long time and they all work great. So my starting point is Ryugi and Finney. I like this because it's, a, again, a lighter wire. It seems to hook them great. The other one that works amazingly well is the Zapu Bellows hook. This is a little heavier hook. So it's slightly heavier gauge, but it hooks them great. So either one of these hooks are, are fantastic and will do a great job for you. one aught or 2 aught. If you're gonna do the Infini, I usually like to go to a 2 aught. If you do the Bellows, I like to do a one aught. Okay, because it's a little bit bigger. I know it's reversed, but that's how I would choose it. And again, we're talking about the 3.5 inch size, right? If we go to the four inch size and just bump it up a size. So then you could get away with a 3 aught or a 4 aught in these guys. If you can't find either of those hooks, the Owner J hook is the hook that we all started with. And this is a great one still. Okay, so the Owner J hook is great. Two aught for the 3.5 inch size, three aught or four aught for the four inch size. And the decoy KG worm hook is another great alternative uh, in that EWG style. So any of those would be great options for the hooks for you. As far as how to work this thing, right? And we've talked about this before, but it's funny, it, it, nothing, Nothing is better than actually getting out there and using this stuff, right? You guys have to get it out there and try it uh, to really figure this out, right? But the whole key to a free rig and why the beaver is so stinking effective on a free rig is that as this thing falls, right? As this weight is pulling it down and sliding down the line, this thing is having this amazing kick. And then when the weight lands and the beaver has no more weight pulling it, it switches horizontal and then has that kind of Senko horizontal shimmy. So you get this two in one action, right? That really it's that last second where it stops and it switches horizontal and goes down that the fish strike. So very important that you pay attention on the initial fall of this bait and then you add extra falls into it. So just very quickly, I want to show you guys exactly how I'm working this thing. And again, you can vary it based on how aggressive the fish are. Okay, but basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna cast this thing out and when it lands, when the bait lands, you are going to drop the rod, you're gonna keep your bail open and you're gonna just make sure it's falling on a slack line, totally slack, okay? I want that weight to go straight down to the bottom, I want it to pull the bait for a little bit and then I want it to kill and let that bait just kind of flutter to wherever it's gonna flutter, okay? Once I know that bait has fallen, okay, I'm just gonna wind up the line and I'm just gonna very gently move the bait back to the weight, okay? Once I know it's back at the weight, I'm gonna fish it kind of like a Texas rig just for a minute. I'm gonna kind of just lift it and hop it a couple times connected together, okay? If nothing has eaten it, I'm gonna wind down, I'm gonna lift it up in a smooth motion and then immediately drop my rod tip back down, okay? So again, it's gonna look something like this. I'm gonna lift it up, smooth, drop my rod tip down, okay? So that smooth motion is just lifting it off the bottom and then dropping the rod tip down quickly is letting that weight fall back down so my bait now gets some more hang time, okay? It's really important that you reincorporate that hang time in with this bait so you're getting that two-in-one motion, that horizontal little shimmy down. If you guys can do that and get in sync with it, you're gonna catch so many fish on these things I can't even describe it. It's an amazing, amazing bait. Now, the 3.5 also makes a great jig trailer as well. So if you guys are throwing you know, a compact or a more finesse football jig, you can certainly add the 3.5 onto the back of a jig and it's just going to give it a lot of action. So you're gonna get a lot of tail kick out of it. It's just gonna be a different action than something you would get with say like a rage crawl or a double tail. It's gonna have a lot of kind of swimming action. This is gonna have more of a pulsing movement, more like a crawdad actually kind of scurrying along the bottom versus like a crazy swimming action, right? So like on the back of a Nishini uh, jig or a headlock jig or even a small dirty jigs jig, this is a great jig trailer for just a more full size option. It's got a lot of movement to it as well. Okay, now jumping to the four inch size here really quick. So the same thing that we just did with the 3.5, you can do with the four. You can use it as a full size jig trailer. You can put it on the back of a you know half ounce or three quarter ounce football jig. You can free rig it. We talked about the hooks and weights, but you can also use this bait as a flip or punch bait. And I love this bait as a flip bait because you can rig it on a free rig with a heavier free rig weight and you can pitch it to a tree and that weight will fall down the tree and then that bait will just very slowly kind of shimmy down through the branches and catch some of those fish that maybe are suspended in the cover 
versus laying at the base of the cover. Right, so if the fish, if you're, you know, if you're flipping bushes or trees or docks, and the fish are really connected to the bottom, then maybe I'll put it in, you know, more of a pegged Texas rig weight or something like that. But where the free rig really plays is that it will fall straight down and give that bait some hang time, which is really, really dope. So if I am pinching, if I am pitching or flipping, basically all I'm going to do is I'm just going to up everything. So I'm going to, you know, 20 or 22 pound fluoro right? And then I'm just going to go to a bigger weight. So five eighths ounce is kind of my go-to. I will, you could use a half ounce. You could use a three quarter ounce or one ounce, whatever you need to get through. I like five eighths. The weight size isn't a big deal here. All I want the weight to do is sink, right? So if you're using a half or a three quarter, it doesn't really matter. I just want that weight to get down there. I'm just trying to give my bait some hang time, right? So on the four inch, it rigs perfectly on the three-aught heavy cover flipping hook by owner or whatever flipping hook you like. So I'll just go to more of a straight shank now because I want the power, it's basically just a flip rig, but we're allowing the separation here so that this can go down and then this guy can just kind of chill and swing down through the cover. Try it next time you guys are flipping or punching. It's just something different, something that fish aren't seeing. If they're just seeing pegged beaver after pegged beaver or brush hog or flipping jig or whatever, this is gonna give them a different look for you guys. You guys are gonna catch a ton of fish on this in shallow water if you will incorporate it in. All right, and then the final size is the big magnum size. Now- Your favorite size, right? This, I mean, dude, this dude is so fun to throw, right? But it's, it's fucking big. Like this is a this is a big beaver. That's quite a large yeah. beaver. Yeah, yeah. So I think this is what uh, they were singing about when known as big beaver. Mm -hmm. I mean, dude, there's that. There's a three and a half inch size. Right. That's a that's a huge huge difference. So basically, the Magnum is going to be used as a standalone. Can you free rig this? Absolutely. <laughs> but you need some you need some mega gear because this weighs almost two ounces. This is almost two ounces of plastic, right? So it's a lot of weight by itself. Where I find that this has a lot of game is in shallow water. So you can fish it basically by itself. You're basically gonna fish this the same way that you would fish like a 5.8 bull flat. Okay, think of it the same way, where it's almost, it's more of a swim bait now than it is like a soft plastic creature bait, okay? So I find that the uh, six aught or a seven aught hook fits it great. The Ryugi six aught is perfect. If you are an owner beast fam, the six aught or the eight aught fits it. We've even played with like the flashy swimmers and stuff with these guys. But basically this is one that you're gonna use the same way that you would, I don't know, a Magdraft freestyle or you know a big K-Tech. You're just gonna give the fish a little bit different look, right? So you're gonna rig it by itself and you're basically going to just put this big amazing moving creature bait down there it's going to have that same motion so as it falls it's going to kick it's going to fall horizontally you can kind of rip it and kind of pull it off and let it have a motion down you can be very specific if you get some good sized fish that are cruising around the shallows like pre-spawn or post-spawn uh, around bluegill beds around brim beds stuff like that you pitch this thing out to them, it is so incredibly natural and lifelike, they smoke it. So I think you guys will have a lot of success with this, but this is definitely one of those baits where you need to be specific with it. They're relatively expensive, it's big plastic, they're not the most durable baits, so Mendit's gonna be your friend here on these guys, okay? Uh, otherwise, you're gonna just plow through packs because they do chew it really good. I just wanna make sure you guys are getting a lot of life out of these. So if you're looking for just a big alternative, this could be a super dope option for you guys in the shallow water, and that's the Magnum. All right, really quick, let's talk color really fast. Just, you gotta have a starting point, right? Now there's a lot of colors in these baits, a lot of great, great options in the beaver realm, all the way from like really bright, like whites and pinks and chartreuses for sight fishing or for saltwater even, or for when the fish are just nutty and they want something really bright, all the way to natural type color. So, you know, you gotta use the color that's right for your waters. You know, some of, some of you guys live in places where they smoke June bug or black red or whatever, those colors are available. If you're wondering where to start, the safest place to start 
is always in some kind of green pumpkin color, green pumpkin or watermelon, right? So they make both a green pumpkin and a watermelon. Now, Jeff, when do you choose green pumpkin and when do you choose watermelon? Whichever pack I have. Okay. That's the scientific approach. Hey, whichever one I've got, dude. So I have, I have been fishing with soft plastics long enough to understand that I don't need to know the answer mm. to why they eat green pumpkin or why they eat watermelon. But I will guarantee you there are days where they will only eat this and not this and vice versa. And it's crazy. These two colors are very similar. They are definitely the two staple soft plastic colors. Sometimes they want it to be a little more green. Sometimes they want it to be a little bit more brown. I don't know why. I've literally seen it day to day shift. So if you're just starting out a pack of green pumpkin, a pack of watermelon, this is a great place to start, right? You got to choose one, pick one. Maybe if it's crystal clear water, I'd start with watermelon. If it's got a little bit of stain to it, start with green pumpkin. If you're not eating the one, go to the other. Now, if they're still not eating it, then I usually try to add some type of flake or some type of color pop. So we actually make our own color here. We call it Fred, but it's green pumpkin with purple and copper flakes. So it just incorporates a little bit of flakes. So you get a little bit of color pop to it. This is a great option. Green pumpkin and chartreuse is also another great option when they just need a little bit of color pop, just something to separate it and make it a little bit different. So either of those would be great options uh, if they're not eating the straight green pumpkin. Now, if you guys are fishing darker water, so like winter time or maybe some shadows or you know something where the water just has a little bit of darkness to it, that's when I love black. And we talked about you know the black colors earlier and OSP makes amazing black colors. So this is just a straight black. They make a great uh, black and blue color. They make some great black and red colors, blacks and browns. So they incorporate black really, really well, probably better than any other brand that I've seen. So blacks can be great in that dingier, darker water. And then if you guys are fishing around gobies or, you know, bait, you know, anything with a lighter cinnamon type color and blue flake is money. So I've taken both, you know, this is the ghost shrimp which is just a really light color with blue flake. And I've taken Griff's favorite color, the 027, which is a dark cinnamon with blue flake. Any goby eating place I've been to, they've smoked these colors. So this, that's, this is really the only time that I would go with a color like this over green pumpkin is when they are keyed in on a goby or keyed in on bait, then I'll usually go with one of these lighter colors with the blue flake. And that's basically my breakdown. I try to keep it very, very simple. You know, four or five colors can pretty much mix and match around the whole country. And then I'll just add in specific colors if I'm somewhere like, I don't know, if I'm in Florida and they love June bug, I'll probably, you know, bring some June bug with me. But for the most part, that color run right there that we just colored or just covered will definitely get you guys through it. All right, guys, that is a wrap. I hope that was informative and useful for you guys. I have nothing but 100% confidence that if you guys incorporate the OSP Dole Live Beaver into your arsenal in some fashion, whether it's a free rig, it's a Ned Rig bait, jig trailer, flip bait, you guys will definitely catch fish that you're not going to catch on other baits. I'm really excited for you guys to put this bait to use and catch a ton. If you guys have any questions or if there's anything that we didn't cover that you'd like to know, please drop it down below in the comments and I will get to it. Jeff will leave links to the products and all the you know important essentials that you guys need to rig these things properly. And until next time, guys, thank you for the support. Thank you for the business. Good luck fishing. Enjoy using the OSP Dole Live Beaver. I will see you soon. Peace.